everybody. I'm delighted to be joined today by Gratzi Wilson from Artisans of Devices and Michaela Davis, a trust and brand expert at the National Trust. And we are here to talk about the new tile collection, which is inspired by the houses, gardens, coastlines and countryside cared for by the National Trust. I can absolutely vouch for it. I'm sitting in the showroom and I've seen the pieces in front of me, absolutely beautiful. Um, so let's start with you, Michaela. How did the idea for the collaboration come about? Um, I think actually um, we had a phone call from uh, Gretzi mm -hmm. and from, from Sarsen. So Gretzi, you might want to take this one actually and give yeah, some background absolutely. on that initially because it was a little bit unusual and how, how it came about, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. So um, I guess we've always been inspired by the properties, the gardens, countryside and coastline that are cared for by the Trust. Um, and we felt that it would all translate really well into a stone and tile collection. Um, we had a bit of a, a list of um, with the National Trust at the top and we were like, oh, let's, we'd love to have a, a National Trust collaboration um, because it felt just really like a very natural fit for our company. We've got very um, aligned brand values and things like that. So we contacted the Trust um, to say, we'd love to collaborate with you. Are you interested? And thankfully they did. Um, and fast forward many, many months later, here we are with um, a really beautiful collection that we're all really proud of. Um, and it's a huge honor for our, our brand to be working with the National Trust. And Michaela, was it tricky to choose the properties and landscapes yeah. um, from which to take the inspiration? Because we have so many to yeah. choose from. I mean, that was that was a huge task, actually. And for my part, that was really difficult. I mean, just to give everybody just a little snapshot on some background really into the National Trust. Um, we actually care for over um, 300 historic buildings, including country houses. We have modernist flats, castles, lighthouses, pubs, abbeys. We've even got a theatre and whole villages. So it was a real challenge. Um, and then we also look after 780 miles of coastline and over 20,000 hectares of parks and gardens throughout England, Wales and, and Ireland. So it felt for, for us really important to capture really as many um, touch points as possible um, and also to have as broad a geographical spread um, as the product range range would allow. I mean, the, the, the range is pretty big with um, 10, 10 themes. Um, and actually, I also wanted to make sure that we had references to our woodlands, um, native flora, the coastline that we talked about earlier, um, and also to showcase our uh, national heritage back back through the ages, which was which a really important part of the collaboration. Um, and also, I think the storytelling was, was really crucial. That, that, was, that took quite a lot of time. Um, and it's really a great way to connect with the past, uh, with our current lives, and to keep it really relevant to modern day living. And I think Sarsons have done a fantastic job in interpreting this really in an authentic way, um, which looks really contemporary. Yeah, I mean, it was really, I have to say, so fascinating to kind of delve into the trust and you know we went back and forth didn't we Michaela for quite a while about the facts and the figures <laughs> and all do. of the information just and actually for us it was really enriching and I think with the collection it's not just about you know here's the tiles we've created a full story um, behind every single tile that we've got there and it's like we've not just popped a tile in for the sake of it um, it's got depth to it which I think is really authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what I love about it is, is the randomness of the, of the pattern. You know, it's not, it's not necessarily, as from what I understand, it's not necessarily to be used in a particular sequence. You can be absolutely um, random. It's almost like looking at a garden, you know, that there's, 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 it, it's, um, it's that beautiful sort of unique quality. Certainly my garden's looking very random at the moment, I would say, <laughs> Carol, looking out of the window, random's a good word for it. But but yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I particularly, um, the the um, woodland um, glade um, design, which is the one I think you're talking about, I think looks amazing. So every time you install those tiles or different customers put those tiles up, they're going to have a slightly different and unique look about them, which I think is fascinating. Yeah. Useful. And what was the criteria? What were you what were you looking for? So I think the things that we were looking for were slightly different to what Michaela is. So um, I think 
probably interesting to hear from both um, viewpoints. We were always mindful of what patterns, prints and designs could work in today's homes and projects. So for us, it was considering the aesthetics, but also thinking about the practical use as well. Um, we certainly like to think that we're experts in what we do. So we wanted a really carefully considered authentic collection and one that we would be proud of. Um, where possible, obviously, um, COVID didn't always allow, but where possible, we did visit um, houses and gardens and landscapes under the trust's care. And we looked at those to be able to help choose designs that we knew we could translate into collections that consumers would love. I think for us, it was so important that we didn't just create a collection for the sake of it. As I said, we really considered it. Um, and how it would work in modern, modern homes and projects. And obviously in the world that we find ourselves in now, we've spent a lot of time at home. And so we just wanted to create a collection where people could you know, embrace well-being and nature and just slow down and enjoy the small things. So I think we considered all of those as part of the journey in, in creating this collection. And Mikhaila, what about you? Uh, you know, it's very important. You, you're both um, very kind of revered names. What, what was the criteria for you? Because presumably for you to associate with, with a company, mm. um, there, there has to be a lot of due diligence to look into how it's going to work. Yeah, absolutely. So the key thing for us um, uh, is really to collaborate with like-minded organisations that, that share our values. Uh, and one of the first things that we do in terms of due diligence is to um, do assessments on their sustainability and the environmental practices. So it's not just about finding somebody who that can create the product and put an amazing design on it. It's all what comes the backstory into the actual business. Um, and also to review the quality and design of their existing product ranges because that gives you a clue as to whether the collaboration is going to be you know a happy time um, and we're also looking for long-term um, partners so we want people that are constantly innovating um, and we need um, a strong marketing team to support not just the range launch but actually to um, keep the sort of lifeblood going through the collections over the the period of the of the contract so um, so that it's you know we've constantly got you know other things coming next year and the year after and I think maybe Grazia will talk about that a bit later um, but it's also that we work we work with in terms of finances to work with stable organizations as far as as far as possible who have multiple channels to market and can maximize the sales sales potential um, I mean royalties are made through the sales of um, all of the products that Sarsons have, have made uh, with the National Trust collaboration and all of that money comes back to National Trust we are 100% a charity so all all of that money comes back to the National Trust to, to help us look after and, and care for the place for our for our, for our places um, and also to support the uh, conservation projects that we have going. Can I ask when you started to think about the project how long has it taken to come to fruition? Um, I originally, um, I was actually furloughed for, for a few months last year um, when this awful um, pandemic started. So I got back to work in uh, January, uh, uh, sorry, in, in July. Uh, Sarsons reached out to me uh, in July, August time, and we got the contract signed um, in October, I believe. So we spent two, two, two months going, looking behind the scenes. Um, and then... Um, because a lot of our National Trust places were closed because of COVID, we had to really plan how we would go out and visit different um, properties. Uh, and it, it actually uh, turned out that I visited some of my local properties, so within my kind of travel distance, um, and other team members within Sarsons were also able to do the same. And then we were able to have WebEx conversations. So it was a very different way of collaborating, yeah. <laughs> actually. And so we were sort of trialing new ways of engaging and coming together. Um, um, you know, we hadn't actually met each other. Normally, you'd have quite a few meetings. You would talk about commercials, talk about finances. You'd go and visit the showroom. All of that kind of thing was, was we had to change that. So we really had to learn a new way of collaborating and getting to know each other. Because I think also, you know, my role within the National Trust is to manage brand 
licensed partners and one of those is the relationship that you have and you know visiting somebody's showroom going to their offices going to their factory it really tells you a lot about the organization and how you think you're going to be able to collaborate through the period of uh, the contract so it was a very different way of working but in many ways um, the country was so quiet nobody was really working people were furloughed so it enabled us in some ways to really put some pace behind what we were doing. So the range was launched. Gratz will probably talk a bit more about that, but finally, um, well, now, last, in the last couple of weeks. So it was, it was a relatively quick process. Um, but I have to say that, you know, Sarsen really kind of embraced the whole National Trust um, element of it and really ran with it. Wonderful. Gretzi, tell us a bit more about the actual design. Um, the, is, it, is it a digital print onto the top? Yes. So we have 10 collections in total within the National Trust collection. And that ranges from wall and floor tiles, um, ceramic, porcelain, some natural stone. So really, we have taken what we are good at. Um, which is natural stone and decorative tiles and created what I think is a, a lovely collection with a really versatile color palette. So the collection ranges from anything such as the Woodland Glade collection, which you can see on the screen now, hopefully if I've clicked the right button, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is the hexagonal design. So that's a porcelain tile that has been um, digitally printed um, and completely random. And then we've got something like the Dirham Derry, which you can see to the right, which is the uh, square tile that you can see behind um, the kitchen there as a splash bag. And that is a tile that is um, screen printed in Stoke-on-Trent. So we've got, you know, English made designs um, as well as, you know, terracotta effect porcelain tiles. So the collection is vast. I think there's something for all different styles, different tastes. So I think if you're somebody that's got a contemporary home um, and you want something really fresh and modern, you've got that with things like Woodland Glade um, or our Shoreline collection, which is just some really classic brick tiles. And then you've also got something that maybe might work in more um, traditional settings. But likewise, I think it's quite interesting to mix it and um, play with different patterns and colors you know, vice versa. So if you've got a more traditional home and you want to add something a little bit more contemporary, the collection has that. But if you've got a new home and you want some um, something a little bit more rustic and with a little bit more interest, um, then you've got something like the brew house, which is the top left image with the um, tin bath. So yeah, 10, 10, 10 collections in total, all with um, lovely stories, which we've created and popped into the um, National Trust brochure. So people can really get to understand, you know, this tile that they may be putting in their bathroom, kitchen or hallway has such uh, thought and um, such history and heritage to it. So I think that's a really special thing for homeowners as well as designers that are putting it into projects. Yeah, I was going to I was going to ask you about that point. You know, why is um, history and heritage important in a project? I think. Can I jump in on that one? Yeah, please do. <laughs> I think that um, connecting uh, a product to history and heritage is a way of allowing um, people to really connect with. Um, the National Trust really and the work that we do um, and it shows it showcases I think um, how important and influential the places are that we look after um, and why they need on ongoing support in, in terms of, of charity and why we do licensing and why you know why we collaborate in the way that we do um, and I think as um, Europe's largest conservation charity we aim to make nature accessible to everyone so whether that is through a lovely walk in a garden or a park or whether it is actually buying product like this that we talked earlier about the woodland glade tiles and everything that is the ideal um, example really of taking some of the outside and bringing that inside um, and I think that um, it's it's all about inspiring people to feel part of it um, and to restore that emotional connection with 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 the natural world and certainly um, 
you know, this last year has highlighted that, that while uh, nature needs our help, connection with nature is vital to our own um, health and well-being. Um, so I think we need nature just as much as, as nature needs us, really. So this is a great way of, of working with um, a, a licensee from our perspective that, that really connects in an authentic way um, and actually brings that sort of heritage and history to life. Yeah, it, I love that word authentic. It just, it's its something that you kind of, it's something to live by, isn't it? Trying to keep yeah. that authenticity. Congrats. What, what about, um, how can you see the collection being used in a, in a contemporary way? So I think whether it's um, tiles like Shoreline or Woodland Glade, I think the collection really taps into a lot of current trends that we're seeing. I think it's also about the pairings. So what you're, your, what you're teaming your tiles with. So whether that's another tile, paint, fabric, furniture, whatever, whatever it is that you're putting with those tiles, I think really can influence how it looks and feels. Um, the tiles have been designed to complement today's interiors. Um, and I, I'd like to think that through our brochure and our photography mood boards that you can see behind me here in our devices showroom, um, that we inspire people to understand um, not just about the stories, but um, how we feel that, that would, the tile would translate to somebody's home or a project, you know, be that a restaurant or a bar or, you know, your, your downstairs cloakroom at home. So I think it, it, it really, um, we've created all of these assets, which we truly hope will inspire people. Yeah, I have to say you, you the photography in here is so yeah, inspiring. Amazing. There's yeah. in the brochure, it's a really beautiful little vignettes. I'm currently redesigning my bathroom in my own head now, looking yeah. at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. That's good. <laughs> Um, a nice new collection we can talk to you about yeah. Carol. <laughs> stay on the line Michaela, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have a favourite um, design and why? well now you're asking me um I love all of them, obviously. I think probably um, the design that's called Afts and Clergy is, has a special place in my heart, um, mainly because of the, the link with, with the trust. Um, Afts and Clergy House is a medieval property in East Sussex, and it was acquired by the National Trust back in 1896 for just £10, which apparently was a lot of money then. Um, and during the renovation work of the property, um, an oak leaf pattern was found um, etched um, into one of the old um, oak beams in the property um, and that's really what's gone on to inspire the National Trust logo that we all know and love today um, and I also have another favourite I'm allowed to have two favourites yeah why not I think <laughs> I've got 10 favourites actually <laughs> no my other favourite is is the uh, the wooden glade I, I really really love that I love the fact that it is just so colourful because I think it's so easy to to sort of um, go for something which is really subtle and go down that sort of magnolia white kind of very very plain um, avenue and I think the the, the uh, woodland glade pattern just gives that amazing pop of colour uh, which you can fit in a you know a downstairs loo or an amazing shower um, and it was lovely that was inspired by um, the Winkworth Arboretum which is in Surrey it's a 46 acre um, arboretum which is quite small but it's absolutely beautiful um, and the pattern was inspired by the idea of looking up into the tree canopy on a, on a, on a sunny day so if you can imagine looking up through to the sky and you've got the branch and the twigs and the various different different leaves and the pattern that that gives you so that's really the inspiration behind those tiles um, and Dr Fox who was the Arboretum's founder um, it, you know I think he would be amazed amazed that you know 85 years after his yeah. inspiration here we are talking about how that Arboretum with all those mature trees has inspired this this wonderful pattern and actually one of his key principles in the planting scheme was to look to inspire by future generations. So I just think that that story is for me really typical of how licensed partners and collaborations can work well. That, that story is really authentic. Um, and he wanted to inspire future generations in the way that he planted the Arboretum. And here we are today celebrating that. So I think that's an amazing kind of rounded story. And that's just one story of you know all the different stories that we kind of surfaced when we did this this development work so that's a real favorite of mine 
Grazie, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I agree with um, Michaela. Alfriston is, a, I mean, it's a beautiful collection and I think um, it's a classic English made collection. So it's a matte glazed ceramic wall tile, um, which is then overprinted in the UK in Stoke-on-Trent with a gloss glaze. So it's got a really lovely tactile um, look and feel to it. Um, the other one of my favorites would have to be Lime. So Lime is a collection of brick and dados. So the brick and the dado complement one another. And it's inspired by a bathroom at Lime in Cheshire. And I think what's really nice about this is that um, we visited the bathrooms to identify, you know, the correct colors that we wanted to use and the style of um, tile that really gave us that authentic reproduction of a Victorian metro tile. Um, and we've closely matched the colors um, as well as we can. And what's also special is the depth of the glaze. So, um, this is probably something that people that work in tiles get excited about, but for us, <laughs> maybe no one else, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, I'm we've, excited, Grazie. Okay, good. Um, we've double loaded the, we double loaded the glaze. So um, basically when you create a tile, you can load the glaze, but we wanted to have such depth and we wanted them mm. to be such, you know, we wanted them to be so rich and feel quite yeah. opulent yeah. that we um, double loaded the glaze. So I think when you look at them, they just feel they feel expensive and rich and gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, they're also crackle, which I think is a lovely touch. Um, and again, I think if somebody wants to go for the brick in a contemporary setting, then that works. But if you want to add a nod of the traditional, then you, you team it with the dado. Um, so yeah, I certainly think that um, lime is up there as being one of my faves, although it, it was quite tough to choose. <laughs> Yeah, they, you have a, a beautiful peacock, peacock blue, yeah. um, which is that that bottom left, which is absolutely stunning. But yeah. um, I think the um, yeah, very hard to choose between the emerald and the olive and the peacock. And I love the way you don't have to use them horizontally. You've got another design, another one where you've used it in a slightly horizontal way. It's really clever. Um, yeah, just the I kind of different ways that you can use them. Yeah, I think definitely when it comes to metro tiles, I think, you know, one of the things we're seeing nowadays is that you can go for a classic brick bond, which is what you would see bottom left um, of that slide. But likewise, people are stacking them. So if you've got um, small rooms and you want to create more height on a room, then you can stack a metro tile just to elongate um, a room, which is great for more contemporary homes. Um, then you've got the, you know, the, the herringbone, which people love. Um, and a new thing that we're seeing a lot of are people using that herringbone, but actually not finishing the edges. So you get a really rough um, mm. edge to the tiles on display. Um, but yeah, I think that's the beauty of tiles and certainly um, metro tiles is that, yeah, you can be as creative as you want to be or, um, or as safe. And I think, or as classic as you want to be with them. Um, but there's certainly a, a style for everyone when it comes to um, the Metro. We've also got Shoreline in our collection as well, which is a really beautiful mm -hmm. um, crackle um, glazed tile in just really beautiful, tranquil shoreline yeah. shades. Um, and again- Tranquil is a good word actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Word of the day, tranquil. So I think, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just really relaxing. And I think they just, it, it, they feel very um, soft and just lovely in, in bathrooms. Um, but again, metro, so if people want to mix it up and stack them or go herringbone, um, then yeah, you've got the option to do that as well. And I think that's, that's a nice thing about this collection is it's, it's incredibly versatile. And will you be adding, are you going to be um, working together further? Are we going to see more houses being um, in, in, inspiration coming from different properties? Yes. Um, We've got another 290 houses to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Just, just laughs> <to> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're um, obviously already in talks because we want to, you know, the collection is, is going to evolve. Um, and yeah, we're already looking at the properties and the landscapes that might inspire future collections, both from an aesthetic perspective, but obviously also commercial as well. Um, we obviously keep a very close eye on trends and just trying to tap into 
the heritage of the National Trust, but also um, balancing that with a collection that's commercial and is going to be desirable for consumers. <laughs> Um, so in the next few months, it will be very interesting from a commercial aspect to see what's selling and how customers are responding to the tiles that we've um, created. I think that'll be very, you know, really interesting to see over the coming months, how, how people respond to the collection and, and where they use it and how it looks and things like that. So we're keeping a close, close eye on all of those things whilst developing um, future collections. Well, I... I absolutely congratulate you i think it's beautiful and the brochure is beautiful too to see where the inspiration oh, has has mm -hmm. come from um, so many ideas it's uh, it's really lovely so um well done to, to national trust and to artisans and thank you very thank much you. for joining us it's been really lovely to chat to you oh thank you thank you thank for hosting you. carol thank you carol